What's up y'all? It's Timmy and today is the big day. We're gonna put the electric camper jacks on the truck house today. I'm also going to show you guys the zero declination quick release jack system which allows you to remove your camper jacks and put them back on super fast so let's get into it. So if there is one thing that I do not like about the truck camper, it's freaking taking the truck camper off of the truck. It's super sketchy every time. Right now I've got a mechanical jack system that you have to crank up with a little crank and it attaches to all four corners of the camper and it's super sketchy. Uh, the jacks aren't tall enough to reach the ground so I'm always stacking blocks under them and I've almost dropped the camper two or three times. The jacks have broken off a couple times and pulled out of the wood. So today we're gonna install the Rico Titan electric camper jack system, which is pretty much the best system you can get in the world. I'm stoked on it. Cost me a freaking fortune, but I'm stoked to have it. So let's get into it. As some of you guys know, I sold the 1987 Suzuki Samurai that I had. And uh, part of that reason was for money to get these camper jacks or else I wouldn't be able to afford them. They're super expensive. Uh, the main reason I want to put these camper jacks on here is because I want to be able to safely get the camper off and quickly be able to get the camper off. That way I can go four-wheeling in the truck or load both of the snow machines on the flat deck and just use the truck as a truck also. So the name of the company that makes these is Rico Titan. They're based out of Illinois and they're pretty much the industry leader for camper jacks, especially the electric camper jacks, which is what we're putting in this thing. These things are pretty sweet. They've got a wireless remote control so you can lift all four corners, all four jacks at the same time or drop them at the same time or individually use them. So pretty stoked on that. Over here I have my wiring plan of how I'm gonna run the wires because I have to run electricity to all four corners of the camper to power the jacks. And then you guys notice that my flatbed sticks out a little wider than the actual truck. So I need the camper jacks to be able to clear that, which right now they won't. So I'm gonna be adding an extension plate onto the camper bracket and that way I can drive my flatbed up under there. So let's pull the jacks out really quick and just uh, show you guys what we're working with. Let's check these things out. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. I'm gonna assume that those are the foot plates for the camper jacks right there. I forgot to mention that these camper jacks are not gonna actually live on the camper like you see with most truck campers. I'm gonna remove them and just keep them in the truck. And if I need to take the camper off, they'll be right there. Pretty solid. These are pretty heavy, I'm gonna say probably use 35 to 40 pounds. It feels super solid compared to mold ones though. So I'm gonna briefly show you guys what else is included if you buy the whole kit. So basically, this is the part that's going to attach to the wood of the camper. So I'm gonna have to shave down the trim and make this bracket fit onto the corner of the camper, bolt it in securely. This part will always live on the camper here. This is the electric control head for the jacks. So I'll have to install this on top of the jacks and I have to get power to it, so that's kind of the trickier part of the install. This is the control module that powers all the jacks and tells which jack to have power and which jack not to. And this is a switch that you mount on the wall to turn it on and off. Finally, the last part of it is the remote control. As you guys can see right here, you can lift or lower each individual camper jack or do them all together, so pretty cool. To do this project in my eight foot long by six foot wide camper, I had to buy 200 feet of wire. So I did 100 feet of negative wire and 100 feet of positive wire. This is 10 gauge copper strand wire, so it's pretty pliable, pretty easy to work with, and that's what Rico Titan recommends to install the camper jacks. Then I also had to buy about six feet of eight gauge wire to go from the battery to this control pack right here. All right. Let's start. So I think step number one is we're going to install the brackets. So I'm gonna to have to get out my multi-tool and trim out the wood on the camper to accept this bracket. And then we're going to bolt it into place. So let's do it. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is carve out the trim right here to fit that bracket onto it to fit the corner bracket. So let's get into that. So these are the corner brackets that come with the Rico Titan jacks. You're gonna put them together to form a complete brace 
around the corner. So there are basically two pieces. There's an angled piece and a flat piece. And you're going to put them both together like so. That way the beveled edges are kind of wrapping around the camper. And then you have this little joint double thick piece that sticks out. This is what the camper jack bolts into right here. So it's gonna sit on the corner, kind of like this. Just an angled piece, flat piece. It'll sit on the camper like so, like that. And the jack actually bolts to this little tab that sticks out. The first thing I'm going to do today is get these screws out here and I'm going to have to trim the trim to fit the bracket. So let's get that going. Here's the old bracket. So my old camper jack system uh, it was a manual jack and you just tie the jack into this and sit there and crank it and it was really sketchy. I think this other jack system is gonna be a lot more solid. So what we're gonna do here is get all this lined up like that. Pretty much just mark where it's going to be, where it's going to sit. It's gonna be about there. Go ahead and mark that with a screw. All right, so I need to take the multi-tool and I'm gonna trim this wood, cut the top right there and take this whole section out. Moment of truth, let's get the multi-tool out and uh, start cutting into the camper. I might have a little bit of an issue because uh, if you can't tell, this blade is uh, pretty worn down. I think there's just enough teeth to do the job though, so we'll see what happens. This technique's for you, Max. This is what I call Max's hammer. can't tell it really helped me to have a new blade. That's pretty bad. Alrighty. There you have it. Alright. It's been trimmed. We do a little bit of adjusting here, but that piece should fit right in there. This piece should fit right here. Alright, you guys ready? It's about to get serious. A little silicone. I'm going to put silicone around the outside. That way when water runs down the walls, it does not go into the holes that I'm about to drill into the camper. And we're going to be inserting these lag screws, a whole bunch of these. As you can tell, they get a little steel washer and a little rubber washer on there. Keep water from going in, but a little preventative measure with the silicone. And I'm also going to drill holes in here so I don't split the wood. So as you guys see here, we got her all siliconed up on the outside edges. That way water doesn't get inside the bracket. So let's get it on here, drill those holes, and get those lag screws in. So we're all silicone ready to go. We're going to drop it into place. Ah, messy silicone. Ah, yeah. You guys have messed with silicone before. You don't want it on your hands. If you can help it. We are in place. Let's drill a hole in. Set a screw in. And obviously the reason you're drilling before you put the lag screw in is so you don't split the wood. The rest is pretty straightforward. Just keep sinking the lag screws on the opposite sides of the bracket every other time. A lot of campers are built out of one by twos and two by twos, stuff like that. And the corner might not be strong enough to support lifting it up by a jack. So that's all, it all depends on how your camper is built. This camper I built with two by four corners, so it's super strong and everything's metal reinforced and braced in there. So super tough, so I'm not too worried about it. And yeah, just continue this process until it's on. All right, kiddos, here's the result. She's in. We got 16 lag screws in. That is a ton of screws. They're pretty thick, and uh, I think it should be pretty freaking solid. Like I was saying, really important to do that silicone bead in the outside just to keep water out of the whole bracket system. And then uh, you're backed up with rubber washers all the way around. Some of these are crushed a little too much, but I think she'll be solid. So here is the Rico Titan camper jack leg. Ain't it pretty? So we're gonna get this foot pad on here. The bolt on the bottom of the foot here is a three quarter inch bolt, it's a beast. Let's get that cranked down. All right, we just get this side, as you can see. It's been all installed, driver's side. Now we need to get the back two brackets and then we'll be done with the bracket install. So unfortunately, this is actually the easy part, installing the brackets. I've got to run all the electrical, so I have to get power to all four corners because these are powered jacks. So uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a task slash project. All right, we get the final piece siliconed up. Let's get this on there and we'll be done with the brackets. First phase complete. 
All four corners are installed. And yeah, I think it's going to be plenty solid enough. Looks pretty good. There's this really awesome company called Zero Declination out of Reno, Nevada. And they make these super cool adapters here. They give you these plates right here, which will extend the width of the camper jack away from the truck so it'll clear it. And the really cool part is they make these quick release jack mounts. First thing I wanna do is show you how these zero declination quick release jacks work, so check it out. This hook piece right here permanently mounts to your camper jack. And when you go to bring your camper jack over to the plate here, you fit that in like so. Then your camper jack starts lifting and catches and then lifts your camper up. When you're ready to remove your camper jack, you lower your camper until there's no pressure in this. And just slide your camper jack out. Super sweet setup. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint all this stuff black because I want it to match the camper. So let's do that. We're gonna let this side dry and then we'll flip them and get the other side painted. Meanwhile, we'll go ahead and install these four inch zero declination extended brackets and the quick release mounts onto the jack. So let's go do that. Luckily, you only need to extend the front two jacks. So we're gonna get these extension plates on the front two jacks. So we're gonna do the driver's side front right here. So this is Zero Declination's Rico Titan four inch extension plate. Pretty sweet. Just slip right perfectly onto the bolt holes bolt it up and you're done. Now most people would mount this to the camper, but I'm gonna mount this to the jack. That way these big plates aren't sticking out in the camper all the time. And for this process, zero declination will give you good grade eight hardware right there. So you get a lock washer, a bolt and a nut. As you guys can see, that zero declination four inch extension plate, super easy to attach. Super solid. Now that we have this extension bracket attached, we're going to mount the hook on there. So remember you want the open ends facing upwards because when the camper jack starts lifting the camper, it needs to catch. All right. That's how it should look. You can see Zero Declination's four inch extension plate right there. Then I have the camper quick release hook tied into that. So it's all one system. So. Nice and easy, you just take the jack, bring it over to the camper. We'll hook the quick release into place and be able to lift the camper super easy without having to bolt the jack up every time. Now that these quick release hook brackets are dry for me painting them, I'm gonna go ahead and install them. So super simple here. Basically just going to push a bolt through the top and a bolt through the bottom. And then we're gonna take the spacers here. I'm gonna put one in the bottom, one on the top. And now we're gonna mount the quick release bracket facing the long part in towards the camper. And we'll put a couple of those lock washers on and go ahead and get everything all bolted down. And as you guys can see here, this is what the zero delineation quick release kit looks like. So it's just a little bracket, spacer, bolt, super simple. So here comes the cool part. So when you're ready to install the jack, you just lift it up. You're going to slide it right into the groove there and lift up. And there it is. Your last step, you have this quick release pin. You just slide it through the hole in the middle. And once that slides all the way through, it holds your jack in place. And that's the system. Pretty sweet. And as you guys can tell, the zero delineation extension bracket right there, the four inch extension, helps me clear my flatbed with the jack post. Now I can actually back the truck right up in between the jack post and load the camper and unload it. Pretty sweet. So uh, next part, I'm gonna get power to all four corners of the camper because these are electric jacks. Okay everyone, this is day two of the truck camper electric jack installation. Let's crack ourselves a beer and uh, get started here. Oh yeah. This is my uh, 16 by 20 cabin I built with my dad. I'll give you guys a house tour pretty shortly here. Anyway, let's go outside. So today, what we're gonna do is install power to all four corners of the camper. That way the electric camper jacks will have power going to them and uh, can lift the camper up and down by the press of a button. All right, here we go. All right, so here's all the stuff we're using here. Not the simplest thing in the world, but also not the most complicated. So, so right here I have 100 feet of 10 gauge wire yeah, good quality copper strand wire. I've got another 100 feet of 10 gauge wire, so this is for the positive and negative. So each individual camper jack has to have its own positive and negative go all the way to the battery bank. So you can't like connect them all and run one hotline. You have to run each individual side 
So it uses a whole bunch of wire, unfortunately. Essentially, you're going to have four jacks. So there's going to be four positive lines and four negative lines running to the control board. And then the control board has two wires which come out of it and go to the battery, the camper battery. And in between the camper battery and the control board is a breaker in case stuff gets crazy. So that's what's going on. There's a wireless switch which controls the jacks. So you can move each jack up or down individually or you can move them all at the same time up or down. And this is wireless. This is a backup promoter in case the wireless fails and it's plugged into the system with a cable. And obviously each camper is going to be different. You can see here, I did the math for my own camper. Uh, that way I have enough wire over there to reach the house battery, which is in the back corner of the camper. And unfortunately, this has to be run inside. So when you hook the jacks up to the camper, uh, there's a little electric head on them, which has a little wire sticking out. And that wire has to plug into this, which will be mounted to the side of the camper. So I'm gonna pick a place in the camper and uh, drill a 7 8 hole, run this through, and screw it in, and then wire this at all four corners. And this is basically the power source for the jack. And lastly, this little wall mount control right here, this just turns the whole system on, and it only stays on for 15 minutes and cuts off automatically just for safety features. So I'll probably mount this right near the door where I can get to it easy, turn the system on, and I'll be able to lift the camper up or lower it and remove it from the truck. All right, let's do it. Install the Rico Titan electric jack heads. Pretty simple. So you just have a little rubber gasket right there and make sure that's sitting flat. And you can see these screws right there. Those are your set screws. So it's like a little Allen key. And you're gonna put the jack head onto your jack and tighten those screws up so it holds the jack head on there. All right, there you go. And the jack head's secured firmly. So the very first thing we're gonna do is mount this control box in the camper over next to the battery. So let's get that done. If you haven't seen it already, welcome to my camper. Small but cozy. So yeah, I've got uh, two six foot long couches in here, which turn into beds on both sides. Got a wood stove right there, a toilet right up under it. Got a little oven on this side. Water tank right back here. Water jug right back here. And a hand pump faucet. A fan up there. Uh, you know, TV, all the important stuff. But the area we need to access is right down here. So let's open that up. And down here is my Battleborn battery system, which is freaking awesome. Incredible system. Super highly recommended. If you're looking for a killer lithium battery setup, those are your people. I also have my Webasto diesel heater down here. You can see the port for it right there. So that's what's going on. So as you can see, there is not a ton of room in here. So we're gonna stare around in here for a second and see what we can find. I am extremely limited on space in here to do this. So I've determined that pretty much the only place to mount my control board for the electric jacks is going to be behind my fridge freezer right here. So let's get that out of the way. So I think what we're gonna do is mount this Rico Titan box for the jacks right here. That's where it's gonna live. I'm not going to screw it in there until I've got everything connected and I'll screw it in at the end. Now that we've found a place for the control box to live right there, now we need to get the external ports installed at all four corners of the camper. I freaking hate drilling holes in my camper, but that's what we're gonna have to do. So let's go ahead and install those four power receptacles at all four corners of the camper. Here we go. <laughs> I got the 7 8 hole saw bit that I need to install the power receptacles, which are these guys right here, into the camper. So if you have a camper that has not been wired, Essentially, you have to get power to all four corners of the camper. That way you can power the power jacks. You do so by mounting these receptacles right here into the wall. And you run power from these receptacles to the control box where all four of them are hooked up. Then you go from the control box to the battery. Right now, we're going to install these on my camper. I'm going to install them up under the bottom so they're out of the weather and they can't get rained on. And uh, I've got to fish the wiring through. It might get a little complicated, but that's what we're up to. 
Let's do it. All right, moment of truth. Let's just cut in and do it. So essentially, this is where my couch pad sits on. I have one two by four right here. So it's about three and a half inches tall. So I've got that little space for the wire to go up into and through. I hate putting holes and stuff, but here we go. We are through. I stuck this uh, little snap-on pencil tool up through there. Thank you, Mark, for uh, that hook up there. Let's see if we can locate it. All right. So here's my couch. Pull this back. Oh, look at that. There it is right there. So my wire is going to run to right there. So that is perfect. So I'm going to do that right there. One on this side. One on this corner. Probably behind the wood stove, that'll be a pain. And the real fun one, it's gonna be behind my oven. So I have about two to three inches of spray foam insulation in this camper, so it's super crazy insulated. Also makes it tough to get wires and stuff through. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna add some silicone. I'm gonna push this all the way up in and plant it, and then we'll screw it into place. Go ahead and seal this up. Especially if this is on my sidewall, where most of you guys might wind up putting this. I'd want it sealed up really well. Push this up into place, and go ahead and sink it in right there. And there you have it guys. See that's nice and hidden instead of being on my side wall where water's running into it, I actually tucked it up under the bottom. And that is where I will power my jacks from. We're gonna install the other three receptacles just like this one, all four corners, and then we'll wire them up from the inside. Silicone this one up. I'll get back with you guys once they're all installed. All right, we have completed all four corners with the power receptacles. So you can see there's one, two, three, and four. So now I can walk up to the camper, hook the jacks up to the brackets right here, plug them into power, and use a wireless remote to lift the camper up and down. It's gonna be sweet. So now let's go inside and start wiring them up. Nothing like a little bit of blood to get things going. Stop bleeding now. Okay, so we're in the camper, and as you can tell, this side's gonna be more fun to get to because I've got kind of a more permanent couch and the oven. Well, I just noticed I got super lucky in this one. Check this out. Yeah, nice. If you guys stare down in there, there's my wire right there. So that is pretty cool. So let's remove this oven and get this final side going. So I have 100 feet of 10 gauge, really nice, fine, copper-stranded wire, really pliable, and we're running power to each individual jack corner. If you notice, there is a positive and a negative for all four jacks. You have to run a positive wire and a negative wire all the way to the control box right there, which is going to be mounted down there. So right now, I'm gonna go ahead and start running the wire from the electrical jack receptacle to the control board over there. So let's get that going. Definitely recommend having a good pair of lineman's pliers for this job. Nice. As you guys can see, I have my positive and negative 10 gauge copper wire hooked into the power receptacle positive negative wire. And we're gonna run that positive and negative wire all the way to the control box. Okay, Mr. Oven has been moved forward. Woohoo! I just found the fourth and final power receptacle wire. It was buried way under the floor. Let's get that wired up and we'll be good. This is the next day, a little project update. It's about 8.30 at night. So I officially ran the entire passenger side of the camper. Right rear jack has power. Got the cord running all the way up to the front. The right rear jack meets up with the right front jack and both of those lines travel together through this side, up under here, down under here, and end right there. The perfect length to reach the control board which will be mounted on that piece of plywood. The driver's side's way easier because this couch hides the wires and the oven back here hides the wires so they can just pop straight out to the control board. So that'll be sweet. Okay, seems too good to be true, but now we have all four corners of the wires here, right here where the control box is gonna be mounted. So now what we're going to do is take all four jacks power cords, put those eight wires into here, into the appropriate places which they're all labeled so I don't mix them up. And once those are in, we're going to, once those are in, we're going to hook this up to the wall and then we're gonna run from this to the battery with a circuit breaker in between, so let's do that. So we're gonna go ahead and attach these first two wires to the control box. As you can tell, I labeled them. This is the driver's side of the vehicle and it's the front jack. So we're gonna call it the left 
front jack LF. And if you look on here closely, you'll see that there is an LF right there, which stands for left front. Then there's a left rear negative positive. There's a right front, so the passenger side, and the right rear, which is the passenger side rear. Let's get those in. All right, and as you can see, the left front is now attached nice and solid in there. And now we're gonna do that to all eight wires all the way across. So there we are. I've got my battery positive and negative wires right there. So I'm gonna put a 60 amp circuit breaker in between the control box and the battery over there. That way in case anything crazy happens, it'll pop everything off. Other than that, got everything hooked up except the last short wire. And uh, then we're gonna screw it onto the wall. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and heat shrink this. This is my attachment to my breaker. I have a nicely heat shrinked connection on this end and this end. And we're gonna put the breaker in between the battery and control board. So let's hook that breaker up. So now I wanna show you guys what I've done. So all four jacks are now connected to the control box. Out of the control box, we have to run to the battery to get powered everything. And I just put a circuit breaker 60 amp on the positive side. I don't have red wire, but this is the positive wire, this green one. Put a circuit breaker in there in case uh, weird stuff happens so I don't damage the jacks. It'll automatically trigger the system, kill the circuit. So the next thing we have to do is connect the positive and negative wires to the battery back there. Let's do it. So right there is my negative terminal post. Right there is my positive terminal post. My two Battleborn batteries are back there. Anyway, Guess what? It's all hooked up. We're all good to go. I'm gonna clean up these wires a little bit, make them look a little nicer, and mount that uh, breaker to the wall right there. And then we are totally powered inside. All right, moment of truth. Circuit breaker's on. Let's see if we have power. <laughs> yeah! That's awesome. We got power. I so totally forgot to install the remote jack activation switch. A son of a monkey. It's all good. This is just a switch that turns the jacks on and it automatically turns off in 15 minutes. Safety feature. And you just want to mount it somewhere where it's really easy to get you because you're going to be outside the camper. You reach in, turn it on, then you can run the jacks for 15 minutes instead of reaching way up under here to grab this. So let's uh, put that in. All right, I carved something pretty. I just took a little piece of uh, wood. It's going to go right there. Some old barn wood. Cut a hole for this. It's going to sit right there like that. And in the back of that, we're going to plug in this, uh, looks like an old phone cord, actually. Just like that. We're going to route that phone cord into the control box. You see? Isn't that attractive? So there's my jack switch right there. And my final step here, just going to plug in the other end of the remote control switch. And there it is. We are completely powered up and set up. So super stoked. So now there is literally power to all four corners of the camper. And uh, all I'm going to do is hook up the jacks tomorrow, fire it up, and see if it works. Quick example of how this zero delineation jack system works. So I literally lift the jack up, put it in the slot, lift it up, locks into place, and you take your pin, push it through, and there you go. Locks in. And so the whole point of this is basically so you can remove the jack super fast. So instead of having to come up and unbolt everything, you just come up here, push a pin out, drop in the jack. Now the moment of truth, we're gonna see if these electric jacks work. So you guys can see, I just wired these plugs a little bit longer so we get a little more room to work with. And now these plugs will reach my ports right there. Let's plug this one in. All right, and we're gonna go inside and power it on. A Little bit nervous, but I think it's gonna work. Here's my power switch right here. It's gonna go and click it on. So the jacks have power for 15 minutes. Let's see if it works. So you can see here, here's the Rico Titan wireless control for the jack. So this is the front left jack. So right there, let's try it. Oh yeah, check that out. <laughs> Hopefully it reaches all the way to the ground. Now, if you wanna look at the uh, rear jack, that is the left rear. So we're gonna lower it. It's working too, pretty cool. And so the big problem with my other camper jacks is they weren't long enough to reach the ground. So this is the moment of truth. I'm hoping this will reach the ground. This truck has a six inch lift and uh, 35 inch tires on it, so it doesn't help. I think it goes to 36 inches of lift. So you can see the numbers there. So it looks like 
I am touching the ground. Looks like I'm in about 29 inches right now. So I have another seven inches of lift, which means I'll be able to lift the camper seven inches higher till the jacks max out. And seven inches looks like it's gonna be just enough to drive out from under it. So I am good to go. All right, y'all game on. That is good news. So as you can tell, these are super tall camper jacks. Um, should have plenty enough height. Uh, like I was saying, they max out at 36 inches of lift. So I have another seven or so inches to go. So I should be able to lift since the jack is touching the ground. I'll be able to lift the camper seven inches off of the bed of the truck, drive out from under it. That is super sweet. And like I was saying, when I'm ready to uh, take the jacks off, so the jacks I won't keep on the camper, I'm gonna store them in the boxes. So all I gotta do is unplug it, pull that pin out right there, and the jack comes right off, goes in the box. Super easy, super stoked. And as you guys can see, the jacks come off with one pin, and then I just throw them inside my side storage boxes and we're good to go. Able to remove the camper anywhere I travel. Pretty sweet. Well, there you have it guys. That's how you install the Rico Titan electric camper jacks if you don't have electric in your camper. Remember, if you want that hardware that allows you to hook the camper jacks on and off your camper really fast, check out Zero Delineation. Pretty sweet, no one else makes anything like them in the States, so I'd highly suggest it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, smash the like button down there, subscribe to the channel, if you want to see more of my stuff, and I'll uh, see you next time. Peace, y'all.